It's the Dakota Cup second round, second leg action on the way in just a few moments time and it's going to be Edwin Allen and McGraw High in action here at Glenmuir High in the parish of Clarendon. And wherever you're watching, we welcome you to our coverage here on the Home of Champions. My name is Donald Oliver, and I'm, I'm hanging out with Chris Taylor. And uh, you'll hear from him in just a little while, but the two teams are making their way out. And Edwin Allen, they are at home. And, uh, well, they have a lot of work to do because they did concede the first leg 1-0. And McGrath with the advantage. They are hoping to keep the home team at bay. There was a, a kick clash at uh, the start of proceedings, so there needs to have been a, a change of wear. And uh, McGrath had to change in a, a much darker color as we see the captains there for the toss. Referee Alexi Perry is the man in the middle who will be assisted by Roland Zabenet. Eden Allen in the light blue and white and we'll take a look at their starting lineup now. Lamar Williamson is between the sticks. They do have a back four of Javain Dyke, Kimola Ferran, Leon Green and Gregory Donaldson. In the middle of the park, Harrison McLean and Blackwood and up top are Thomas Johnson and McKellen Tajay Thomas with eight goals and five assists so far to his name. As far as uh, McGrath High is concerned, they'll also have a uh, 4 3 3 formation. Joel Davis is their custodian. David Hutchinson, Jamari Fowler, uh, Demoy Adir, and Isaac Mason, the back four in the middle of the park. They have Morris, Taff, and Tucker. And up top, Romain Campbell. Uh, Shane Pusey, who has six goals and three assists to his name. And uh, Devon Davis, who has three goals and three assists as well. It's still drizzling here at Glenmuir High, yeah. but we're about to get the action on the way. And it is going to be the away team, or the home team rather, with the kickoff. Eden Allen in their light blue and white. We're also used to seeing McGrath in their light blue apparel, but they have switched to the darker hue. And Eden Allen will get us on the way. Opening moments of this one could be interesting. Conditions are cool, but obviously slippery and uh, difficult underfoot conditions as well. At the back, they're trying to nod that one out is Hutchinson. And now here's an attack going down the right hand side. Oh, lots of speed there. And he goes down and referee points to the spot. Penalty awarded. Wow. What a chance right away for McGrath. Already leading 1-0 on aggregate. And well. That was pretty soft, wasn't it? He was looking for that call. Not much in it, but doesn't matter now. Opportunity here to convert. And it goes in. Isaac Mason gets his fourth goal this season. And he converts from 12 yards. And McGrath with the advantage early in this contest in the second leg. And they now lead 2-0 on aggregate. Really good penalty. Couldn't have been more accurate. Off the upright as well. Confident in his approach. Goalkeeper Williamson diving the right way. But it wasn't good enough. What a start for McGrath. 
And that's an away goal. This one is dinked forward and the keeper spills it. Dangerous position here as McGrath trying to capitalize. And now Edwin Allen, they require three goals. Yep. Oh, nicely done by Hutchinson. What an uphill task. Edwin Allen coming out of a, a tough zone age. Came second behind Clarendon College. Five wins out, six wins actually out of their eight matches. Edwin Allen, the only two losses came against Clarendon. 25 goals they scored and conceded just seven. Here's a corner kick coming in, headed away. We're trying to, to capitalize here through Farrell Tucker. Tucker's ball inside at the back post. McGraw looking to provide the killer pass. Oh, he skips away from a couple of challenges neatly. Davis, Davis does well. Oh, that's wonderful. He's brought down. He was the one who was hot down inside the area. And uh, the penalty was awarded in his school's favor. And now they have a free kick. Davis is a slippery player, isn't he? Free kick for McGrath. Lamar Williamson has been tested on a couple of occasions already. Hutchinson has decided to leave it alone. This one dinked at the back post and there's too much on it. Updates coming in. Rossiz and Christiana locked at nil all at half time. Do remember that Christiana lead that fixture by three goals to nil after the first leg. And just to also mention that all the matches that should have been played in the, Ma in the Manning Cup, their first leg fixture, fixture in the second round, all of them have been uh, postponed to tomorrow, hopefully. Opportunity for Mokra again. Pusey. Oh, he's also skillful. Sends this one across. Not clear properly, but uh, he will gather eventually. Lamar Williamson. Well, they have lost in a dangerous area, but he was up under duress. Illegally so, according to referee Perry. Remember that interesting game we mentioned between Monroe and Manchester. Monroe taking a one-goal advantage in the second leg only to give it up after two minutes one all between manchester and monroe manchester leading 2-1 on aggregate that's a very close match there slip through Edwin Allen trying to come forward through Harrison and it's gone out wide to Dyron Lee Johnson he surely did not expect this start to Farai Burton McGrath coming forward oh the defender slipped and uh, good recovery by Edwin Allen. Davis has now gone over again to that right-hand side and creating havoc once more. 
McLean. Dyke loses it, trying to win it back and does. Couldn't get a teammate involved though. And McGrath, they have it again. But only for a short while. Harrison gets a return ball. Harrison forced to go wide, looking for options. Maybe the option, the only option on his mind just now was to just shoot. Edwin Allen, I reckon they have finally settled. But in the aftermath of settling, they know that they need three goals. They are trying to get one here. But again, good defending at the back. Demroy a deer on this occasion in the way. And there's the McGrath Heist manager, the head coach, Jermaine Thomas. Hoping to clip the wings of another Clarendon team. William Nib earlier today getting by Central High. McGraw looking to do the same in beating Edwin Allen. Here they are, Edwin Allen, trying to go through the gears. And he was impeded on that occasion, Darren Lee Johnson. And they tried to progress quickly, Edwin Allen, but Magra not allowing them to do so. And can they make use of this opportunity? Edwin Allen. Really ambitious that he's thinking about a direct shot, McLean. Yep. Dyke wasted. Lots of updates coming in. Mile Gully lead Belier by a goal to nil. In first half action, 2 1 on aggregate. An all Manchester battle. Cedric Titus and Taki locked at one apiece. One all on aggregate there as well. Garvey Maceo leads St. Mary High by three goals to nil and 10 nil on aggregate. I think that one has pretty much been decided. Rossiz and Cristiana locked at nil all still. Cristiana lead by three goals to nil on aggregate. There's an opportunity for McGraw and Edinale with the clearance as far as Harrison. But they're just reinviting the pressure, Edwin Allen. I thought they settled a couple minutes ago, but apparently not. This ball played inside. Oh, that had to be plucked out well. Dyke again in the right place at the right time. Edwin Allen's zone winners, Clarendon College, leading the car trip by two goals to nil in first half action. 10 nil on aggregate. And then the big battle between Mannings and Port Antonio. Mannings just scoring moments ago to lead Port Antonio by a goal to nil. And that game 1-1 on one, one, aggregate. It's a royal battle going on there. Great to see the Portland, the Portland Parish producing some challenge there. Not only Port Antonio, but Happy Grove as well lead their fixture against Ocho Rios but that would be aggregate. quite a scalp though for Port Antonio yes, if they would. manage to get Mannings and for to think that the Port, Port the parish of Portland would have two teams in the round of 16 as well yeah but as far as the seedings go they were very far far apart Mannings and Port Antonio for sure yeah Oh, 
Oh, well, that wasn't the best clearance at all. And Pusey has it, sends this one inside the area. And Edward Allen trying to clear, and ambitious effort coming in from Hutchinson. On that occasion, couldn't make a proper connection. This is a can turn with a swing like that and say, mind you get water knee. <laughs> You're old enough, did you create that? No. Okay. <laughs> Even though my age, it was yet before my time. There you go. Ball played through. He's onside, shot taken just over the top. Harrison was in a wonderful position there. On his left foot. And uh, he went centrally. He still missed the target. And he had all the goal to aim for. I think he would have considered that to be disappointing himself as he was looking for his third goal, Patrick Harrison. McGrath. He chipped that in the opposite direction, didn't he? Ferran went long. Ball played through. An opportunity here for Edwin Allen inside the area. And the clearance made before Darren Lee Johnson could get a shot off I mean it's still drizzling here at Glenmuir High but the, the playing conditions aren't terrible much better than what we saw in the first game where sections of the field were waterlogged but I don't think these two teams have that to concern themselves with. Ball given up. Now it's McGraw and Taff. Taff with a searching ball out wide. And couldn't quite grasp it, Shane Pusey. and there's a coming together inside the box and the free kick will go in favor of Edwin Allen. What a big deal this is for McGrath High. 2-0 on aggregate. 
their best year coming in 2019 where they got to the semi-finals. They got to the quarter-finals. Well, twice. Once if you... Once other than 2019 well, as they drive forward. McGrath and uh, trying to cut inside but lost possession in the end there, Farrell Tucker. Yeah. Tucker winding his way in. Did get to the quarterfinals in 2021 as well, McGrath. Oh, that ball slipped through. The keeper is off his line. Oh, that's a fabulous save, you know. And the defense having trouble to clear. Finally they do, but what a strong hand that was from Williamson. A magnificent save. And now here's Edwin Allen. Trying to go forward again, but McGrath, they do have numbers back. Nicely done. Challenge was a good one, according to the referee. Tough. Was running back now. A wasted ball. They have their support. Look at the save again. Yeah. Making himself big. And it was a strong hand there. Yeah, very strong hand to deny Alric Taff. Opportunity for McGrath. Yet yeah, McGrath fell at this stage last season. Love to improve on that, and they made a big headway so far. Edwin Allen, back to back quarter final appearances 2021 and 2022. So this would be a step in the wrong direction if they exit the tournament at this stage and do remember at 2021 they lifted the ben francis cup as well download the sportsmax app today from the google play or app store to keep in touch with action in schoolboy football in jamaica and trinidad and tobago Try to turn that one around the corner for Tucker to run onto. There's a lot of rotation in the front line of McGrath as they try different variations. And here they are a shot from outside the area that Williamson apparently wasn't too worried about. Oh, not nicely done. <laughs> Harrison, really doing well so far. Donaldson. That's a lovely pass and wonderful take. Two goes down too. Too easily, in my opinion. But then again, mm. we did see what has been what was awarded before. Yeah, that was just wonderful from Harrison. Through the legs. Another update coming in. Ocherias have found a go-ahead goal against Happy Grove. It's now 2-2 two, two on aggregate. And oh, that's a lovely ball slipped through into the attacking third. And he goes down again inside the box. Well, or is it right outside it is? 
or has he he has pointed for the penalty towards the penalty spot yeah he looked to his assistant and the assistant indicated that it was a penalty well yeah that was my initial reaction that there the, was a challenge inside the box let's see here it looks like if it's inside let's see here it's no, outside, it's the, outside box. the box. It's outside the box. Wow. Wow. Let's see here from this angle. It's Easily outside, outside the, box. the box. It's outside the box. And the assistant got that one wrong. He wasn't sure it was obviously uh, uh, obvious, Alexi Perry. Looked to his assistant, and then his assistant did the run around the touchline just to indicate penalty. Rolando Bennett. Well, that one was a wrong call. And they look to increase their lead. Oh, fabulous save. And justice has been done. Mason was looking to convert his second penalty of the day. But Williamson with another brilliant stop today. Now from a neutral's perspective, you'd have to say that it ended the way you'd want it to. Wasn't a penalty. Didn't deserve to be a penalty. And the keeper executing the save. Justice done. Yeah, tricked him as well. And Isaac Mason decided to go to the opposite side. And the kick was a little bit too central. I think the goalkeeper threw him off as well. The goalkeeper took that right step as if he was going to dive to his right. And Mason said, oh, yes, I've got you. Yep. <laughs> and he wanted yep. to go down the middle. I don't think he wanted to go down the middle. I actually think he wanted to go left of the keeper, but his kick was just too central. Mm. Still an uphill task for Edwin Allen, though. <laughs> well, cleaning the ball didn't help just now. <laughs> They really have to step up their game, Edwin Allen. They really do. And just to keep his footing, does really well. Shane Pusey and plays the ball over the top. Well, this actually is Pusey. Pusey lining up an effort that goes straight to the keeper. Twenty-five goals in eight matches for Edwin Allen. So they average over three goals a game. And they need at least three here today. yet to see much from Teje Thomas, their leading goal scorer. He has eight. But McGrath have been the better team in the first 26 minutes. Pusey switching the play, was trying to find Teje Thomas. Or rather, Devon Davis. Yeah, Thomas would like to be seen the ball. But his Campbell. team is giving it away. Campbell. To Pusey, Pusey driving forward, another crunching challenge there. It was necessary. Thomas having to come deep to collect. They're number nine. Must be said, the field isn't a pretty sight right now. <laughs> Look at it. It was luscious green before the action today. With all this rain, it's quite muddy. And players are slipping and sliding everywhere. Unprovoked and otherwise. I wouldn't want to be the laundromat. It's better these days because 
back in the day it would have been the laundry man <laughs> who had to deal with everything. Especially with white. Oh yeah. card will come out to Gregory Donaldson. Devon Davis to take this free kick for McGrath High. Has been a handful so far in this game. At the back post, delightful delivery. He rushed it, you know. He slipped as well, to be fair to him, Hutchinson. Just a late slip. And in, because of that slip, it put him underneath the ball. More updates, Donald Dintil leading Horace Clark by two goals to nil. Now 5 nil on aggregate, so Dintil looking to book their sp spot in group three here. These two teams playing for a spot in that same group as well. Horace Clark certainly up against it. Had a good showing in the first round, led their zone for quite some time before falling down in the standings. Garvey Masia now leading by five goals to nil against St. Mary High. 12 nil on aggregate. Ball punted long. The keeper asks for it and then punches it away. And McGrath looking to come forward now. Working his way inside and looking to supply the pass, which wasn't quite there and McGraw will come again. Ball played inside and too close to goalkeeper Lamar Williamson. The Cornwall match has finally got on the way. Nil all between themselves and Black River. Cornwall College lead that fixture by three goals to one from the first leg. Yeah, Montague Bay was experiencing a lot of rain earlier today as well. There was quite surprised that they doubt. got that game going. Yeah. Yeah. They did well. They did well. Well, we'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen any pictures. And it's currently 4.30 in the afternoon. They so. do have lights at Jarrett Park. Mm. This one's driven inside. McGrath handling it well. And that's put into touch. There's a shot, speculative from distance, well wide of the mark. Leon Green with the effort. Davis. Yeah, 
he'll take the free kick himself. McGraw making a change. Willock has come on for Campbell. Ball played inside of the back post, diving header that was blocked. Good enough by Hutchinson. Nice run. Kept his balance too. Couldn't provide the pass and he eventually goes down. Farrell Tucker. Referee will now stop the play. A lot of these players are willing to try and beat their opponent and it's really difficult to do it on this surface. They lose the ball a lot. But now a free kick to Edwin Allen. Inside the area, nodded away. And McGrath can break here. Davis. Attacking the area, Davis, Davis! Devon Davis shows his class yet again. That was superb. And that's his fourth goal this season. Incredible hit after a scorching run inside the box. And McGraw, they are on their way. This has been a big first half for the 2019 semi-finalists. Tavarai Burton is shocked, and so is this Edwin Allen team. This is their home game, but the visitors have come to play. Had to change their kit because of the clash, and it has only enhanced their play. What a left-footed strike by Davis. Fourth of the season, 2-0 to the good, 3-0 on aggregate. And, well, only a miracle can stop them. McGrath. And they have missed a penalty as well along the way. Oh, yeah. Do you hear me now? Superb finish, wasn't it? It really was. Never easy to kick in wet conditions as well because the footing isn't certain. So for him to plant and strike like that with the instep, really good technique. Cut his weight over the ball, his body over the ball, everything. And he deserved a positive result from the finish, from the strike. It's only the round of 32. And we've seen this before from McGrath. Went to lofty heights. Some would have considered that back in the past they would have been outplayed when they got there. But this is still a big scalp. Fell up the round of 32 last season, McGrath. Edwin Allen have been back-to-back quarter-finalists in the Da Costa Cup. Granted, they have never gone beyond the quarter-finals, Edwin Allen. And, well, based on what we've seen so far, they might not be returning there. McGrath were beaten by Edwin Allen last season, as you saw earlier. Three goals on aggregate. 
1 0 and 2 0. Didn't even score against Edwin Allen. And McGrath have done their homework this season and they have come to play. They have been very prepared. They have, been, they have concentrated well. And even though the conditions are tough, they have looked the better side. Lots of time to go, though. Well, they do say that revenge is a dish best served cold. It is. Chilly. And in these wet conditions, it is prime. Yeah. It, we did say it hasn't been a good day for Clarendon teams. Two have fallen already. Very technical. Central high. Could Edwin Allen be the third? Mm. Edwin Allen now needs four goals. Could this be one of them? Tajay Thomas is placing this meticulously on a particular blade of grass which possibly isn't wet. And right beside him, Javon McKellen. The wall has been set up. Four boys in it. Here's a shot taken. Ooh, that did not miss by much. Lots of pace behind it. But unfortunately for him, the accuracy wasn't quite there. Just twice this season, Edwin Allen have scored four goals or more. This is a strike. Yeah, skewed it well wide. Both came against Claude McKay. 7-1 and 7-0 wins respectively. And you'd have to think McGrath, a tougher opponent than Claude McKay. So the odds are against them, Edwin Allen. Tough. Trying to send that one inside and the clearance wasn't properly done. But Williamson will mop up. In case you're wondering, Manchester now lead Monroe by two goals to one. Ball played through again, and the keeper favoured to get there ahead of Taff. It's now 3-1 on aggregate to Manchester. Um, yeah. Some daylight now between them and the St. elizabeth based team. Oh, this is a lovely run. The pass wasn't as wonderful, though, from Tajay Thomas. And Tucker trying to go long, and again, it's too long. Williamson will get out of his goal to retrieve. All the other results at the moment remain the same. Cedric Titus and Taki locked at one apiece. It was nil all in the first leg. So, so Taki McKellen has the advantage. It. Taki with the away goal. This game is Cedric Titus's home game. So Taki out of St. Mary, known for cricket, Taki, have produced two national cricketers. One West Indies cricketer in John Campbell. Trying to make their mark in high school football. Thomas trying to make a mark now. Free kick taken at the back post. Heads go up. And uh, they are able to clear and possibly counter. Was looking for an outlet, deciding to dribble in a dangerous area, but you have to give him credit. He's done well there. And uh, Mason. Telling ball through the middle. But there was an infringement on the play, apparently. Ocherias lead Happy Grove by a goal to nil, but Happy Grove have the advantage. It's locked at two all an aggregate. But Happy Grove have two away goals. So they are still in pole position. Mile Gully lead Belair still by a goal to nil. 2-1 on aggregate. Din till 2-0 over Horace Clark. That means 5-0 on aggregate. Here's a free kick. Easily handled by the Edwin Allen defense. Still in a dangerous area, though. Davis. Lovely. Ooh. And I think he was trying to make the cross. Love how he dropped the shoulder there, Davis. Did have the beating of his opponent, but the delivery just not up to the same quality. Clarendon College 3-0 leaders over the Cartwright. 
11-0 on aggregate, the defending champions. And Manning still with a slight advantage over Port Antonio. That one all on aggregate, they need 1-0 on the day. Pusey couldn't beat his mark and Edwin Allen will come away. Hmm. Not sure what he was trying to do there. Alaric Taff. Searching ball. Almost taken down in his stride. Challenge coming in on McKellen. Was a tough one, an illegal one, according to referee Pusey. Free kick for Edwin Allen. Punted inside. An opportunity still. Turning and shooting wide of the mark on that occasion, Darren Lee Johnson. He's done well, giving chase, getting there too, Taff. Taff delivers inside, and the header, wide of the mark. That was a good opportunity for McGrath. Murphy Perry has seen enough of the first half. Just a, a few seconds shy, according to our clock, but... He's the one with the official timing, so we'll go with what he says, and he says it's half time. And McGrath, they are in the driver's seat at the moment. And uh, through goals from Isaac Mason and Devon Davis. Mason from the penalty spot, Davis, with a wonderful finish for the second goal. McGrath in the cruise control here. With a 2 0 lead on the day and a 3 0 lead on aggregate. Welcome back to Glenmuir High School as we continue our coverage of the Issa Da Costa Cup competition and the second round, second leg fixture between Edwin Allen and McGrath High. McGrath leading by two goals to nil on the day, three nil on aggregate. To say that they're in the driver's seat is a gross understatement. Referee Perry is ready for the action to get on the way. And Edwin Allen, they need four goals. They are known for comebacks, but there has been little indication that they will be able to score four goals in 45 minutes and not concede at the same time. But we have seen miracles before. Donaldson, nicely done. Hey, hey, hey. 
flag goes up to indicate an infringement on the play. Blackwood was the one who was brought down there. There's a free kick inside the area and the header away from the target. Picked up by Johnson. Johnson handled ball just outside the area. Free kick awarded. Dyke has decided to leave it alone. Bjorn McLean behind it. Here's McLean going right into the side netting. Nine with the board over the top once more, but the flag is up for offside. Lots of second round action going on. Mile Gully now lead Belair by two goals to one. So Belair have gotten back a goal in that encounter. It's 3 2 an aggregate in favor of Mile Gully. We are cross to Darren Lee Johnson. Johnson. Inside the area and it's headed away by McGrath. Another attempt is charged down and goes behind for a corner. There's a corner kick coming in and it's headed away. They'll try again. Oh, just managing to clear. Ed and I are looking for that first breakthrough as the corner kick comes in at the back post and it's headed behind for a goal kick. It's going to be some task for Edwin Allen. It's some task to score against Clarendon College, and the Cartwright have managed that, although they trail 4 1. 
and 12 1 on aggregate. Boston run to the edge of the box, and the interception was made. And McGraw with a ball over the top. It's Davis onto it again. Davis. Good challenge. Yeah. Wasn't strong enough on that occasion. Half time between Cornwall College and Black River. Nil all is a score. Cornwall College lead 3 1 on aggregate. Manchester still lead Monroe by two goals to one. 3 1 on aggregate to Manchester. Mannings lead Port Antonio 1 0. 1 all on aggregate. Well. That one, very interesting. Rossiz and Christiana still at nil all. Here's Davis again, lining up a shot, but straight to Joel Davis. Christiana leading 3 nil on aggregate against Rossiz. Or Williamson, rather, with a save. Word coming in is that Rossiz and Christiana have played to a goalless draw at the end of 90 minutes. So Christiana are through. That's a big deal for oh, the parish of Manchester. It is a massive deal that Christiana are through to Group 3 at the round of 16 stage to join William Nib with that result over Rossiz. McGrath on the verge, Dintil on the verge. Dintil more than the verge. Verge in terms of time. Yeah. Five nil on aggregate between Dintil and Horace Clark. Two nil on the day. Ocheria still lead by a goal to nil. Two all on aggregate. Happy Grove with the slight advantage on away goals. Cedric Titus and Taki still at one all. Taki with the advantage on away goals. One all on aggregate. Murphy Perry telling him to get up, but Edwin Allen not able to capitalize. Garvey Maceo, 8 nil leaders against St. Mary High, 15 nil on aggregate. Here's McGraw through Willock. Willock sends this inside the area, the keeper, oh, it does well to nice get take. there, Williamson. <laughs> nice take. Will be a good one for the cameras, Williamson. Hanging in the air. Oh, does well to keep it in play, Davis. And still has possession. Oh. Quick move inside the area, Davis. Needs a good cross. Decided to go himself, not sure why. And now it's with Mason. And Mason with a chip inside the area that's headed away. And McGraw will settle again. Willock could not beat Dyke on that occasion. And now here is Harrison. And Harrison places that one into space. Keeps his balance. Lovely ball inside. Not clear properly a chance for Edwin Allen. Surely deflected and in. Tywin Lee Johnson with the goal for Edwin Allen. And uh, they get one back. In fact, it was Blackwood inside the area. And uh, Edwin Allen saying that they're still in with a chance here. I actually thought initially that a chance had gone. Took so long to execute the strike here. 
And yeah, deflected, but it was always on target. It's his goal, Blackwood, his second of the season. The central attacking midfielder. They need at least three more, though. Mason. Mason sends it high, but Williamson. The goal score has been taken off, mind you. Jalil Blackwood. Well. Jaquan Johnson replaces him. What an end. Finished with a bang. There's Johnson with, uh, what, four goals? Or three goals and four assists to his name? Anyway, McGrath, they lead 3-1 on aggregate now. And they have a free kick in an interesting position. Davis is there. And I think he has left that alone to Mason. It is Mason. First touch wasn't the best inside the box and then a follow through causing the infringement. Another change made by McGrath. Shane Pusey is being replaced. by Dante Anderson. Change so Ed Edwin Allen as well. Daniel Stewart is now on the park, replacing Patrick Harrison. Play that wide. Dyke. Now he goes the other way. McGrath. Lovely give and go. Didn't quite work out on that occasion, though. Anderson. Anderson sends his across. First time effort is wide of the mark. Tough inside the area. Was trying to guide that one to the target. Jaquan Johnson was pulled back, was he? Referee saying that he had lost possession already. And now the ball over the top. The keeper is off his line and beaten here. And that one will cross the byline for a goal kick. Download the Sportsman app today from the Google Play or App Store as this shot is taken from way out, well over the top. That came with a hint of desperation from Tajay Thomas.
ball clicked over the top was looking for Willock so I've actually kept it in play Top, but the flag goes up for offside against Dante Anderson. Referee Perry is having a, a conversation, if, you, if you're going to call it that way. There's a red card in his hand, though. The fourth official is involved. The assistant referee is also involved. Showing somebody the red card. Part of the management staff has been given marching orders. He's on his way out of the compound as well. Yeah, he's been dismissed from the bench. sure what was said but obviously Rolanza Bennett brought it to the attention of Alexi Perry Darren Lee Johnson sends this one across the area if Edwin Allen get a second one here it, it could be really interesting But here is Davis. Again. Out muscled. Yeah, dribbling with the ball on his left hand side, so he's giving the defenders a chance to move it. And of course it's not the easiest to run into. St. Elizabeth based Black River have got the go-ahead goal against Cornwall College. They lead one by one goal to nil on the day. The Cornwall leads 3-2 on aggregate. Here's a free kick. And the shot that's taken, that's wide of the mark. kick coming in and no issues there for Williamson
Lovely take. And uh, bat ball played inside and a wonderful finish. Initially, I thought the flag would have gone up, but he had beaten the offside trap. And again, it's a, a good finish from Orlando Willock. And uh, his first goal this season and uh, put this result beyond doubt, I think. Again, Davis into the area. This time he picks up the assist, Davis. And yeah, Willock was clinical. Davis has been in the thick of things. And well, I think everyone a bit surprised that that wasn't flagged for offside, but good run then by Willock. He himself might have been slightly surprised. Maybe the cause of, for the muted celebration, even though it's his first goal of the season. I think that one puts it beyond Edwin Allen. They would now need five goals on the day and three more, four more, sorry. Five total on the day. What a performance from McGrath. This and a way fixture for them, a team that they met at this stage last season, couldn't even score a goal. Went down three nil on aggregate over the two legs. Now they lead 4-1. Yep, they have the three goal difference this time around. Their best performances have all come on the German Thomas since he has taken over this school. Semi-finalist in 2019. And he's been working hard to get back to that level, that stage and even beyond. And this is a big step in the right direction. against Edwin Allen, who certainly would have been well-seasoned and heavily tested because they come out of the group with the defending champions, Clarendon College, who are out-and-out favorites for another title, in fact. Right now, leading 12-1 on aggregate against Decatric College. Well, that's another statement made. Should they have the mercy rule for it's a uh, football competitions as well. I've never given it much thought. Keeper again off his line. Uh, the challenge being evaded. And the ball sent inside the area from Anderson. I, I thought Anderson was barely offside as well on that occasion. Thought he was ahead of the back line. Here they come again, McGrath. Willock. Corner kick to McGrath High. Here's the corner kick. And a shot from distance. Another ambitious effort here from Farrell Tucker. 
He's also looking for his first goal this season. Another change by Edwin Allen. Darren Lee Johnson is going to be taken out. Raj Bryce comes on. Word coming in is that Mile Gully have qualified for the round of 16. They defeated Belair by two goals to one. Three to an aggregate in that all Manchester derby. Taki defeating Cedric Titus by four goals to two. And Taki advance as well over Cedric Titus. So Taki into the round of 16. What a big deal that is for the St. Mary based school. St. Mary, another parish who's never tasted the Costa Cup at the Costa Cup title. Manchester continue to lead Monroe by two goals to one. Three one on aggregate. Clarendon leading the Cartwright by four goals to one and Mannings defeating Port Antonio by two goals to nil. A late strike meaning that Mannings advance on aggregate by two goals to one. Wow. What a fight from Port Antonio. Good mm -hmm. effort. One nil they led after the first leg. But Mannings showing their pedigree, especially over the last few seasons. Finalist two years ago, semi finalist last year. And finding a way. 2 nil there in the round of 16 again. Good work. There's a ball punted to the edge of the box. And uh, again, this football game punctuated by the referee's whistle. It's a free kick to Edwin Allen. Just outside their own penalty area. Conditions are really dark at Glenmuir. Remember that everything was pushed back by about half an hour due to the rain we had here. It's full time between Happy Grove and Ocherias. Two all after 90 minutes, meaning that Happy Grove advance 4 3 on aggregate over Ocherias. Happy Grove into the round of 16. Portland based Happy Grove. So they do sneak one in. Yeah, they do. Bryce. Oh, he's taking the ambitious route as well. It's also 90 minutes between Black River and Cornwall College. Black River defeating Cornwall College by a goal to nil at Jarrett Park. But Cornwall College advanced 3-2 on aggregate. 
So the 12-time champions, Cornwall College, in the round of 16, yet again. I'm actually having words with some spectators. Got the yellow card there in the referee's book. Not clear properly. Now the flag is up for offside. They'll switch the play well. McGraw on the attack once more. They'll try again. Good find. Willock is there. Willock decided to go for goal, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, our cameras utilizing every ray of light here to try and give you the best pictures, but it's it's darker than what you're seeing here. Well, whilst you analyze the light, Manchester have seen the light. They have defeated Monroe by two goals to one and advanced 3-1 an aggregate to the round of 16. Manchester High, that was a tough match against Monroe, the seven-time champions. Here's Edwin Allen. So the parish of Manchester with three teams in the round of 16 so far. Cristiano, Mile Gully, and Manchester. Yeah, that's a natural light. That's what the spectators are seeing. That's what we are seeing. What the camera is doing, it's very best to, to present to you this match under these conditions. I was turned all the way up. Yeah, dust till dawn conditions. Mm. Garvey Mosey have completed a 9-0 thrashing of St. Mary High. 16 nil on aggregate for Garvey Moseo, the 2021 champions. Oh, nice take. He's taking some nice ones today. Yeah, he's, Acrobatic. He's, he's done that for the cameras on yeah. several occasions, Williamson. Also to confirm that the defending champions, Clarendon College, completed a 4-1 victory over the Cartridge out of Manchester. And they advanced to the round of 16, the defending champions. 12-1 an aggregate over the Cartwright College. They tried to win that from the first leg. Yeah. Two matches going on still. This one and Dintil still lead Horace Clark by two goals to nil and five nil on aggregate. Dintil heading towards group three as well as McGrath for the round of 16. Another yellow card comes out. And the yellow card is shown to Javon McKellen for that late challenge on Farrell Tucker. Ball played inside the area, got a free touch, and slips at the vital moment, did Mason.
tempting ball inside the area. Mason got to the end of it. <laughs> yeah, couldn't quite control that one. Well. Devon Davis, your player of the game. Devon Davis, well, he has come up with a sports match that moment of the game. And here it is. Look at this run. Had the strength. Oh, and didn't he have the finish too? That was a wonderful hit. Yeah. We could look at that over and over again. Delightful stuff. He loved it too. Yeah, Davis with his fourth goal this season. And he got his fourth assist, is it, as well? Davis. Yep. Here's an opportunity for Edwin Allen. McGrath coming up with the possession. And the referee says, play on, and they too flicked over to this right-hand side. Davis does well. Davis still on his left foot. Davis straight to Williamson. He was looking for a second. Just needed to pick a corner, Davis. Had so much time on his favoured left foot. I'm a bit disappointed that he kicked that so centrally. Look at this. Oh, way too central. Went for power. Should have just placed it either side of Williamson. And that would have been a goal. Well, Joel Davis, we haven't called his name a lot. The McGrath custodian need some attention from off the bench. Based on what I'm seeing, <laughs> he just wanted to wash his face. Okay. So, Group 1 decided Clarendon College, Cornell College, St. Elizabeth Technical and Mile Gully. They've all made their way through to the round of 16 of the Da Costa Cup. In Group 2, Manchester High, Happy Grove, B.B. Cook and Tacky High. They are through. Here's an opportunity for McGrath. Well... They've given up a corner kick. Edwin Allen. McGrath, can they add one more? He has had a, a wonderful game today. Davis. Devon Davis. Has a goal and an assist. And is our player of the game. Can he provide another assist? Almost. The header was wide of the mark. Kept in play. Here's the ball coming inside at the back post. Has time to control. And another corner kick to McGrath. And Mason has been a, a workhorse in this game as well. Here's the ball inside the area. The keeper spills it, but holds on. And the second attempt.
That's a good block. Ball played through the middle. And an opportunity here, but that's a good save again. Joel Davis hasn't been asked to do a lot. But on that occasion, he comes up big for his team. Another change, Alric Taff, it's not a good game. Tabari Officer comes on. We had a colonel in the first game. We have an officer in the second. You cannot make this stuff up, can you? An opportunity again. Davis, he was clipped outside the area and could be some problems here. The yellow card has come out. Kimola Ferran goes into the referee's book. Just the yellow card. Still hasn't put away the yellow card. Referee Perry. I thought something else was going to happen there. Well, free kick for McGraw. And Mr. Officer will take it. Yep, Tabari Officer. Peering into the darkness here. Officer deflected and over. And a corner kick. Well, that would have been an arrested development there. He should be charged for being so clean. <laughs> I think that's a 21 being lifted over on the far side. Yep. Thank goodness for our cameras and our on screen here. Basking in the twilight. Indeed. I think Romain Campbell has come on. Officer with the corner kick and another corner for McGrath. Three minutes of stoppages to be played. Well, I think that's three and not eight. There you go, three. Corner kick coming in again. They're looking for a fourth. It's another corner conceded by Edwin Allen. Seventh corner kick for McGrath. Here's the delivery again. And this one is headed wide of the mark by Adir.
speculative effort that uh, Davis will enjoy. Another change, and uh, DJ Morris comes off. As uh, we're in the dying embers of this game. the end of the game and uh, one year later the tables have turned and uh, McGrath who went out at the hands of Edwin Allen last season at this same stage return the favor and Edwin Allen they now taste defeat and McGrath, the other ones through to the round of 16 of the Dacosta Cup. And uh, what can we say to the turning of the tables here? McGrath with the 3 1 victory over Edwin Allen. 4 1 on aggregate. full-time highlights and McGrath coming forward early winning a penalty in just the second minute what a start for them and Isaac Mason off the upright into the back of the net no chance Williamson and it was Mason's fourth of the season McGrath with a dream start 2-0 on aggregate at that stage good chance in the first half for Edwin Allen Paul kicked over the top from Patrick Harrison, just not quite sorting out his feet there and finding a corner, an opportunity missed. Then this, a top save from Williamson on this occasion. Called into action and a strong left hand. Devon Davis, the man of the match, was fouled. We thought it was just outside the area, the referee said inside. Penalty saved though by Williamson who came up with another big save. This time, Mason, Unable to convert. McGrath continuing to come forward, continuing to cause problems. This man, Davis, again, down the left-hand side on his left foot. Great technique, wonderful power. And it took a strike of that quality to beat Lamar Williamson again. That's after 37 minutes, fourth of the season for Devon Davis. 2-0 on the day for McGrath at that stage first half going well this an opportunity for Thomas their leading goal scorer didn't have much to say today their number nine to Jay Thomas wide of the mark then into the second half Edwin Allen with lots of work to do getting a ball inside the area trying to cause trouble then they would get on the score sheet from this deflected and in and what a way for Jail Blackwood to come up with his second goal of the season their number 13 it did take a slight defection off the boot of David Hutchinson but it was certainly on target and Edwin Allen pulling one back but at this stage still with so much work to do at that stage needing four goals and that was just one McGrath ensured that it was put beyond them and it came in the 66th minute from Orlando Willock nice through pass by Davis who picks up an assist to go with his goal he was certainly the best player on the day and Willock with a strike to the near post. Questions at first about offside. And the official said no, and Willock off the mark in the season. 3-1 McGrath and the away team with such a thorough performance. Davis should have added another. 
but the shock was a bit too central. 3-1 McGrath, they get the job done against Edwin Allen. Look at that performance from the Linstead base, McGrath high. 10 shots on target from 18 attempts. Just two on target for Edwin Allen, the 2021 Ben Francis champions. And they were kept at bay today. Three yellow cards, all with an Edwin Allen shirt attached. And some seven corners for McGrath High. They enjoyed majority of the possession at 58%. And 3-1 winners, they're into the round of 16, into Group C. The water play of the match is with Janae. It's no other than Devon Davis. And congratulations, Devon Dennis. You are the water man of the match. Devon, they call you Messi. I need to know the meaning behind that name. Well, grew up in my place. I play ball. My family, um, Bonzi, mm -hmm. just started calling me Messi. So from oh. that on, they always call me Messi. Well, you followed in somewhat of Messi's footsteps today and you scored uh, some goals for your team. Tell me about you guys moving on to the round of 16. How do you feel? Well, from what the coach say, everything I got record. We just coach. I just do it for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Congratulations and thank you. All right. Thank you. And now we welcome. Ah! Now we welcome the coach of Edwin oh, Allen High School. Oh, coach, unfortunate result for you today. But how would you summarize your team's performance? Well, first, you know, um, just give, let's give credit to the opponent. You know, they came and they did what they were supposed to do. I think the, uh, I think in that first two minutes, you know, the, the penalty boosts their confidence, you know, a bit and kind of throws off a bit. But we held our head high for, for, for most of it, you know, still gave them a challenge in that first half, you know what I mean? But unfortunately for us, you know, uh, it went their way. Hey coach, in about the 64th minute, there was a bit of discussion with you and the referee. Can we get some insight as to what that discussion was about? Uh, he just wanted to remove a, 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 a coach from the bench. I, I'm the head coach, so I got to defend my coaching staff. That's just it. I don't have time to argue with officials. Okay, coach. Now, what are your plans for your boys as the season comes to an end? And how will you keep them motivated? Well, it's just football now. The train every day, um, get, the, get them in competitions, keep them in a rhythm. You know what I mean? Uh, the boys who can, 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 uh, who I can retain for next season, you know, just ensure I keep them together, keep them in a rhythm, and we'll continue. You know, um, the, the thing about Edwin Allen now, we are... We, we, we rewrite the culture where every season we reach at least this this stage, right? Um, five years ago we weren't doing that well, Thank so you, coach. we are on a high now. Thank you, coach. So uh, today's just unfortunate. Okay, and yeah. now we welcome the head coach of Magra High. Coach, this is a big win for your school, a bit of retribution we could call it. What is the difference this time around? I mean, we, we prepared far better this year. I mean, last year, you know, we, 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 we got knockout right here. But this year we started a bit earlier and um, the players would have grown. They would have matured somewhat. And, and I think that, 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 that based on what you're seeing now is a result of that. Well, coach, even though your boys are off to the round of 16, is there anything that you think they should improve on? I mean, we can still keep the ball a little bit longer, but the underfooting condition was not the best today. However, I thought we applied ourselves, we acquitted ourselves well, and in parts we, we did play, and I'm really grateful for that. Coach, I want to know, for the changes and substitutions, or change, changes or substitutions that you made during the game, what was the thinking behind them, even though you were leading? I mean, we started... Uh, because we knew they would have been coming because we scored, I mean, we were leading 1-0, all right? Uh, we knew they, they would have been coming, so we started a little bit attacking first. As soon as we got the early goal, I think that we, we, we kind of uh, made a change to kind of stabilise things a little bit inside the middle of the pitch, and it worked. OK, thank you, Coach. Yeah, man, thanks much. So, Chris Taylor, let's go through all of these results because there are a couple of surprises and we'll get into that a little bit later on. Glenmuir with a 9-0 win over Morant Bay, so this go through easily on aggregate. on aggregate, right? Stets with a 2-0 win over Irwin. 
3 0 on aggregate. BB Cook registering a 3 0 win over Paul Bogle, and they advanced by five clear goals. William Nib 1 0 over Central, and that was the score on aggregate as well. McGraw 3 1 over Indian Island, of course, 4 1 on aggregate. Rossiz and Christiana 0 all, and with that, Christiana. Christiana they go through 3-0 on aggregate. It was 2 all between Happy Grove and Ocho Rios. So one team from Portland, Happy Grove, they are through 4-3 on aggregate. And there is a surprise. Yeah. There was a 93rd minute winner, a 93rd minute winner <laughs> in this one. Well, at, at a 93rd minute goal yes. actually for but, Port Antonio. Right, but it turned, it turned out, out to be, be a the winner. winner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, 2 1 in they favor lost. of Mannings, but another team from Portland through to the round of 16. They finished 2 2 on aggregate, mm -hmm. and Portland, Port Antonio go ahead on away goals. Continue. Black River defeating Cornwall College on the day by a goal to nil, but Cornwall going through 3 2 on aggregate over Black River. Manchester High. 2-1 on the day, 3-1 on aggregate over Monroe College. That was a tough fixture. Gavin Masaya had it all their way. 16-0 on aggregate over St. Mary High. Clarendon College, 12-1 on aggregate. Not over Clarendon College, but over Decatrit College right. in that one. From completing, a, what was it, 7-1 aggregate score over Vlear Technical. Technical. Yep. Mile Gully with a tough 2-1 win in the All-Manchester affair. It mm -hmm. ended 3-1 on aggregate over Belair. And 3-2 over Belair and Aggregate. Taki with a 4-2 win over Cedric Titus. Taki go ahead of Cedric Titus. 5-3 on Aggregate. And Dintil with a 7-0 thrashing of Horace Clark. Dintil going through by 10 goals to nil on aggregate. So let's look at group one in the round of 16. The defending champions are in it. Former champions Cornwall and Stets right in there as well as Malgoli. Could this be the group up there? This is a tough group. It Just is. two teams to come out. The top two will come out of this one. Wow, what a group. Group two sees Manchester, Happy Grove, BB Coke and Taki. Four team, four parishes represented in this group. Portland and St. Mary in this group with St. Elizabeth and Manchester. Let's take a look at group three now. Dintil, William Nib, Christiana and McGrath. This could also be very close, very but you consider well. Dintil to be the heavy favorites. favorites to get out of this yeah, one. certainly, to win the group. As for second place, it's going to be a tough fight. Tight. And uh, group four, Port Antonio, Kavi Maceo, Glenmuir, and Froome. We're talking about three former champions here and Port Antonio who would have just surprised Mannings. Yeah, as a dark horse. As it, well, it's a really dark horse. As we take a look <laughs> at uh, the promos as far as uh, matches are concerned in the Manny Cup competition on Saturday. Mona High, we're going to be seeing them for the first time. Finally, against Jonathan Grant High on Sports Max 2 and Sports Max Plus, 12.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 1.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. That's when our pre-game show begins. And we're going to be seeing the champions for the second time this season, JC against Eltham High at 3.15 p.m., 4.15 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. That's on Sports Max 2. And of course, if you're on the road, it's going to be free on Sports, Sports Max Plus, which is on the Sports Max app, Chris. Yeah, you can't miss it. Second round action in the Manning Cup. What a day this has been second round action into the Costa Cup as well and McGraw High with a top performance yet again into the round of 16 they didn't get here last year well they're here in 2023 they defeat Edwin Allen in the 2021 Penn Francis champions by three goals to one what a performance what an enjoyable day at Glenmuir High School Yo Issa High school boy football look this season people them ready you know all right then, big up, manning cup, Oliver Yashil, you make winning cup, to watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, Bata cup, which team are in the championship this season. Yo, it's a, Bobo Bandai, Bascool, I got finished the league and beat now, which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a, Missy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, bus load of supporters from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some of the superior. They want some of what you TV to Country and turn your night for one reason It's a schoolboy football Good come, look one, look all Which team are the best and I go better than the best And if I hear team beat your chest It's a schoolboy football A team could rise and a team could fall 
But I never will know until the whistleblowers are around Come enjoy the show Yo, it's that, 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 that competition I never have it nice up People love see when boy I get dice up on the field I'm going to school from far And them love with peaceful and the youths now walk. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local The youths are move on to international big league And I steal people heart But member wish party start Me start